maps postcard beaches. The wild, natural beauty is stark contrast to ugly clusters of seemingly abandoned, half-finished homes. The construction is largely unpermitted, says Lambo Press boss Rafael Oparo, with structures built in phases as the owners accrue the necessary funds. Scrappy, rules be damned solacism is emblematic of the mental anarchy and individuality of Italians, he says. Was he talking about houses or Lamborghinis? Even as Sontagata explores refinement and subtlety with Audi's cash, the hurricane is still all angles and ostentation, the ten-cylinder thunderhead crackling across the landscape with snack bang upshifts, extravagant ergonomics, and superlegal capabilities. It's still loud, fast, and violent. It's still anarchy. Italian individualism explains how Ferrari can reside just 25 miles away and develop radically different answers to the same questions. The Huracan doesn't have the fanness of a 458 volume, but then the Ferrari doesn't have the Lamborghini's outsized personality. While Audi's four rings are cast into the suspension members, the Lamborghini has far less compliance than an R8. As with the Aventador, the Huracan's suspension travel feels as if it's measured in a scant few millimeters. Holding the weight to just 3423 pounds means our test car was light on optional equipment, no mat meat or geological dampers to smooth the swells in the road. Limestone brick roads such as those in the quaint medieval downtown of Gallipoli are hard on the car and harder on the driver. The fixed back, carbon shell sport seat L8 availability option in the U.S. forces you into an upright position that suggests the seat is perched higher than it is. The navigation and audio equipment is Audi MMI spec, but the display is rendered at half the usual size and plopped in the lower right corner of the digital instrument cluster, making it difficult to read.